Theater Friends. Today I'm joined by playwright Celine Song and actor Wai Ching Ho of Endlings, which is one of the most beautiful things that I've seen in a very long time. What is Endlings? Can you tell us a little bit about the plot and the character that you play also? Mm -hmm. um, Endlings is about um, uh, three last remaining uh, hangouts in the world. And hangouts are uh, the direct translation of Henyo is a sea women, mm -hmm. and they are uh, sort of free divers who s dive without equipment to sort of grab seaweed from a uh, seafood uh, from, uh, from the ocean. And uh, what's uh, what's amazing about uh, what's been going on with this particular culture, which is I think uh, we believe it is about a millennium old, um, is that it's going to disappear and. The a majority of the population are above 70. Um, the average age is very, very high. So it, it is a group of people and a culture that is sort of like aging out and is dying out. And the reason is uh, usually economical. Um, because uh, it used to be at some point that this um, hangers are the only ways to uh, harvest seafood mm -hmm. for Korea. So um, they were making really good money. And it's one of the ways in which that uh, is one of the, f I think, only matriarchal uh, communities in Korea because uh, women are the henyos and uh, they were able to be sort of like breadwinners um, even a, millennia, a millennium ago. Um, so, uh, but then because it's the, what was sort of driving them was economical um, with farming seafood, easier ways to get seafood, we can do imports and things like that. This very specific, like very labor intensive way of uh, gathering seafood um, stopped being economically viable. And now a lot of Hanyas live in poverty, which is a very different situation than even like a couple hundred years ago. Uh, what was sort of uh, driving them was that they were able to make a lot of money just being able to, being the only source of uh, seafood in Korea. So basically, you just keep making your play even more heartbreaking. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> so that's amazing. Yeah. That's so sad. Yeah. Uh, and you play Hansel. Can, can you talk a little bit about uh, it? Yes, I play Hansel, who is um, one of the three Hanyos that are in Endling, the play. Um, I'm the oldest one. I'm in my late 90s. Um, of course, in reality, I'm sure there are more than three, but for the, the purpose of the play, we three are the last of our species. Um, and uh, but what I love about the character that, that Celine has created is she's old and she's poor and, and she works really hard and it's, and it's, it's bone break breaking, you know, go in and out of the water and as they say in, 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 in the script, you know, we have this almost like a routine kind of chanting saying in and out of the water, in and out of the coffin. And in spite of these um, hardship and, and such a difficult life, she remains a very optimistic outlook almost. And, and it's just so, it's not so, uh, so much, it's, it's like she couldn't care less about a lot of things. Um, and and somehow she remains humorous and, and have fun with her fellow annuals and, um, and there's something so wonderful about it to, to play someone who's dying out and yet yeah, there's total, totally no self-pity mm. at all and I, I think that's really a wonderful character to play. How did you become interested in the, in the uh, ha ha hanyos? Um. Um. Uh, I think that the growing up in Korea for 11, 12 years, and then like you know having parents who are Korean American also like uh, hangers are a part of a uh, natural national conversation about um, rural aging in Korea, and like it is about like a very specific tradition that is even strange to even Koreans themselves in Korea that is sort of um, probably going to disappear at least in the form that it exists. Um, so I have always sort of been interested in them because, you know, like, there are documentaries about them in Korea and things like that, so I grew up sort of watching it like that. Um, but then I was watching a, a, one of the documentaries 
uh, in, I guess, like 2015 or something like that with my mom, and then my mom thought it might be a play. And my mom is a, an artist herself, so like it wasn't like an a offhanded thing. She was just sort of like, what? Isn't it so wild that like these women that you have nothing in common with are Korean and, and you also are Korean? Something about the Hanyos that I kept, you know, I kept thinking about it was like just their their daily practice. It's almost like a ritual, and it's almost like theater where you you know you do the same thing over and over and over and over again. And I and I wondered if you could talk a little bit about the parallels if you found any between theater and and the Hanyos. Actually, it's very funny because that's what I've been doing ever since <laughs> we also started. And I was like, okay, I go into the theater, I, I rehearse, and then I, and this was I was thinking about it. Oh my God, this is my life <laughs> in and out of the theater, <laughs> uh, and it is really true. And and then um, the Henios have after they do a whole day of of this fishing. Uh, harvesting in the sea, they come up and at night, that's all they do is watch TV and <laughs> go home from the theater I watch TV and, and then because my fellow um, uh, actor Emily Kuroda uh, was, is, was famous in Gilmore Girls and I never watched Gilmore Girls so I just got started on Gilmore Girls and I was Binging. I've been binging ever since <laughs> this uh, rehearsal started for ending. So it is, there is definitely a parallel. Of course, once the play is over and now it's open, maybe I have more life. <laughs> but yes, there is a parallel in that. Um, in, in that we go into the theatre, we, we, you know, we're on stage, and just like the handles, they go into the sea. And <laughs> And then we uh, we go home and watch TV. <laughs> well, the thing that I was sort of running into when we were casting for this play, because we needed um, three like elderly seeming uh, Asian American actresses who can both dive into the water and do a monologue. You know what I mean? And it's like a very uh, it's like a very uh, uh, specific like very seasoned crowd. And we were all the casting directors that we were talking to were like that's going to be the hardest group of people to cast. And it turns out I actually haven't found that to be true because, uh, because I feel like actresses who have been in the game uh, for, you know, like as long as like Emily or Y or Joe, like I feel like, um, yeah, they can fucking do it. Like it's, it's really not, a, it was never a question of like, uh, like they can fucking do it and then they're gonna understand this character so well immediately because that's what it is like you know uh, the, these henyos like even though their material rewards are not going to be enough for their entire careers as henyos um, they go on and they do it every day anyway and I feel like uh, the thing that like I feel like I've been learning from you Emily and Joe who by the way are like sort of like walking community of like oral history of Asian American theater. Like if you just like sit and like talk to them, you can always just like, did, did she die? Like what, what did they do? <laughs> like, you know, even her, she was in that show. And, you know, <laughs> I know, is she dead? <laughs> so I, I found, I found uh, sort of working with them to be, I, I don't know, I feel like um, whenever I hear your stories of like being in theater, it's, it always made me go like, oh my god, the perils here are so much more like, like almost literal <laughs> than it, it seems. Yeah, I think I will never stop having like endless admiration for you because I kept imagining your pitch for this, and you're like, it's a play, and there's it's mostly women. Yeah. We criticize white theater, and there's lots of poetry and lots of water. Yeah. How did you? pull that off, like, I wonder, you know, what's the, the most surreal uh, part about seeing your vision on stage? Right. Um, I think that I wrote this play as a sort of like a farewell letter to theater. Mm -hmm. uh, I was sort of in a place where I felt like I wanted to sort of uh, quit being a playwright, and I thought that this would be the last play that I write. 
um, and it was about endlings um, that are these, uh, these women. Um, endlings means the last of the species. Um, but I also felt like one uh, also. And I don't know what that really means, but there is a way in which that like the, making the kind of theater that I make, um, I couldn't really conceive of a home for it in New York City. Um, in my play, I talk about real estate a lot. I think that is sort of changed. I think that how uh, New York, New York City real estate is changing is changing the way theater gets made. As in, like uh, a lot of off Broadway theaters that were usually were homes of experimental work, they're being pressured to now cast celebrities, do it this way, only do works by people who are like extremely established, only do work that can go to Broadway. So what that does is that limits the things of like sort of like the day can program. And meanwhile, um, sort of like Broadway and things like that, those things, only people who can like sort of like uh, afford to have shows there, uh, again, they're being asked to make very specific work. And because of that, and of course, there are spaces in like Brooklyn and things like that that are um, actually reserved for like actual experimental work, but often they cannot uh, support um, technically complicated work. Um, they can't afford to pay actors what they should be paid, and the least of what they should be paid. And uh, I was sort of running into like, well, so what is the space for me in New York? And I was feeling like I couldn't really find a home for it. So I was like, okay, well, fuck all that. I'm just going to write something that I can stage in my mind, or like stage in my heart or something, where it doesn't have to physically exist. Um, it does. I don't have to think about real estate. I don't have to think about uh, what kind of space I can put this in, which is why I was like, you know what? I always want to set up a uh, play in ocean at, at the ocean. So, ocean. You know, like <laughs> good luck. You know? <laughs> and then now trans in transformation, New York. I don't know how you're gonna do the transition. Good luck. You know. <laughs> So I think that's how I was able to sort of write it, and then like you know like of course the casting directors tell you you know like you should try to like have a pre-open casting or you, you should try to cast younger people like there's like a lot of question of like and you could uh, there's like a there's a lot of questions about like who you can cast and by the way I'm, I think it has changed since I wrote this play but I started writing this play in 2015 so at the time the conversations about diversity conversations about things like that were not as there as it is now, five years later. Mm -hmm. So so I feel like we forget that also. Yeah. Like we ended up having like a long conversation about Marvel movies the other time. Yes. And when I was when I went to see the play, I kept thinking it's like you put together the Avengers in mm -hmm. a way of, you know, Asian American actors. And can you can you talk a little bit about, you know, knowing when you found the right people and what's it like for you? Because you have such beautiful chemistry. And it's always so exciting to see chemistry with actors that's not, you know, like a romantic thing, because that's the only thing that people seem to know how to do. Mm -hmm. And it, there's this beautiful synergy with the three of you, and I'm about to hear about how you accomplish that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that was actually, you know, a sheer luck, because, because you know, I, I was in the original uh, play reading at the public when uh, Celine was uh, chosen as the emerging playwright play ending and I happened to be on their roster or pulling uh, Asian actress of certain age <laughs> and watching oh came up and so I was pulled in and I, I did the, the, the role of Han Sol and right away I really felt um, that really resonates with me and um, and I, I just loved that and it was so quirky and it was so unusual when I read it but I had no idea how it's going to be done <laughs> because <laughs> all this water <laughs> happening but I think we we bonded almost right away because Celine I remember telling me after the reading you are perfect for us <laughs> Well, I knew I was perfect because I'm old enough. <laughs> but, but I think that the part of it is like the it was important to the Henyas and the way that they're depicted is that like I think often because of how sort of magical their work is, it's easy for people to sort of treat those characters 
uh, sort of like magical people who only talk about things in magical ways or like <laughs> sort of exotic like that kind of way. And what was important to me is that like as somebody who speaks Korean and who doesn't read the translation, who actually hears the way they speak, they talk like sailors. You know what I mean? Like they don't care. They've spent their lives doing too much hard work for too long. They're um, they have usually they're usually illiterate. They usually don't have not gone to any sort of like proper schooling. They just uh, started diving when they were like children, and then by their 16, they were fully henyos. So that's usually what was going on with them. So um, they were not talking like, you know, like, oh, I miss my children. They were just like, fuck my children. <laughs> right? So that would sort of be like that, and I really wanted to capture that in the play. Right? Yes, yes. And uh, I love it whenever people, uh, there's some audience members who go like, too much cursing. And I'm like, well, they, but they are too. They do. They do. Like, if you want an authentic experience, of I, yes, I, 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 I agree because I am not Korean. I'm from Hong Kong originally, and Chinese, and I certainly had no uh, knowledge of Han news whatsoever. But when I grew up, I remember seeing the old women that would sell things in the marketplace or in, in the fish market or in a uh, produce market or whatever, they curse like yeah. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, as you know, young girls who were supposed to be brought up in, in you know, <laughs> you know uh, culture. <laughs> and was, you know, we try to hold our ears, but it, they, it's all there and, and it's real. It is, they, they do yeah. speak speak like yeah. that and they're still you know it's it's a uh, you know it's they don't have any education right. really and you know well, life is hard and right. <laughs> well, well, that's what it was and then i feel exactly. like the first time we you started reading hansel um you were reading it like a like a lovely grandmother and i think yeah. that the direction that we were talking was just like no you don't give a shit you don't, you don't give a fuck <laughs> you don't give a fuck i can't keep saying that and it's like ah <laughs> Here we go. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. That's a very interesting. Oh, oh, but the, the chemistry that you're talking about. Yes, we were talking about Emily chemistry. And, uh, Emily, I, I didn't meet until we were at ART when, when she was cast. And we like bonded instantly. We <laughs> yeah. so much fun. They're both Scorpios. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that could be it too. <laughs> I didn't know a lot of Scorpios in, in uh in the theater, some yeah. lot of actors. I don't know why, but we all we all bond. But um, then she is another one, very earthy, very um, uh, just full of life, full of joy. So it, it was wonderful. And Joe, I have met. I have done things with her in the past uh, in a couple of productions, um, and we always, you know got along and, and she was perfect for Su yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So perfect, you yeah. know. So yeah, anyway, I, I, I don't know, but the, the chemistry was just there and we didn't really have to um, I don't know, we didn't have to have like sessions where we would we, we try to bond and we would just it just really happened very naturally. And and the, and the idea, and because our age is very appropriate, I am the oldest, and, and I'm, Emily is in the middle, and Suja, I mean, uh, Jo Yang is, is the youngest of us. So it, it all fitted very nicely into the pattern, and somehow the characters were. Yeah. were Right, and then of course we have our wonderful. Wonderful director Sammy Canold, who who just like brought us all together and, and you know gave us so much insight. Well, so they also moved to um, when we were working on our world premiere at ART. Mm -hmm. We all were sort of stuck in Cambridge. Yes, we were. <laughs> so, you, so we were. They had. They were sharing like like a, I would say like a door. Like we a were door in the same building, so yeah. we would like share cooking and whatnot and visit each other and it was we really it was a community just like the Hanyu's community yeah. and we would like have three little houses but we would have three little apartments but it's all in the same complex <laughs> with uh well, Sammy was down the road yeah. but she's there yeah. and and, and uh, Celine so it, it was it was a fun time. 
I am a sucker for art about grandmas, because grandmas are the best. And I have to say that, you know, when I was sitting there at Endlings, I, I remember the fact that most of the curse words that I know I learned from my grandma. Mm -hmm. And my grandma was the person who gave me my first shot of whiskey when I was four. Uh, and she was the one who taught me everything that I needed to know about men. Mm -hmm. And she gave me all these lessons. But I will never uh, forget how many curse words she, she, she taught me. And, it, I, I, you know, can you share, if you're comfortable, obviously, mm -hmm. what's the one thing that your grandma taught you that's mm -hmm. stuck with you forever? I, unfortunately, cannot tell you anything about my grandma. Because both side, uh, grandmas and uh, my father and mother, they both died in their early 40s. Oh, no. You have to remember this is a long time ago, you know, I mean, I'm so much older. Um, so I never met my grandmother. But from my, what my father told me, uh, her, her mother was a really nice, nice woman. Um, but other than that, <laughs> I'm sure uh, well, being you know Chinese and, and, and very conservative, I don't think she would have cursed so much. <laughs> so honestly, I have to defer to, to, to Celine for this purpose. Um, I think that the thing that my grandmother um, sort of always reminds me is that because as somebody who is a uh, someone who went through a very horrific war and survived, I think that I sort of learned about that. There's something about um, her her ability to have survived um, now uh, 91 years of like uh, modern Korean history, which um, anybody who glances at the history books will tell you is unbelievably turbulent. The fact that she was able to now survive that, and then now she has a now she has a smartphone. You know, there's something amazing about her life wow. having gone through, um, you know, like her having been born in what is now known as North Korea having to do uh, the refugee path down to South Korea, for her to have like started like, making a living in S South Korea, uh, raising two daughters, like all, everything that she's done, she's really she's really tough in a way that like it doesn't even uh, I can't really even um, quite imagine. Like I feel like that's a way in which like I feel the generational gap or like I feel alienated, which is that like you know like when I am like crying about something that like. Like she, my grandmother was a little bit like died, <laughs> right? Like did a who what 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 you know what I mean? Like what city was decimated? Like I don't know. Like, <laughs> so so I feel like that's something that I love my grandmother. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Just a survivalist spirit, yeah. which is she's like still alive, right? So amazing. Amazing. Wow. I know. Yeah. Wow. Did she teach any curse words? Um. No. Okay. <laughs> she watches a lot of uh, uh, she watches a lot of TV. You know, yeah. So she she teaches me a lot of like uh, Korean melodrama things. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like tropes in Korean melodrama. Like she teaches me those. Oh my god, I love that so much. Yeah. I, was, I was watching because her character's obsessed with television, and that's all she wants to do. Do you think Han So would be a fan of Madame Gao? <laughs> I think she would actually, because yeah. Madame Gao is tough. She's, she's, <laughs> she's badass. Bad that's, that's that's what she is, and and I think Han So is tough too. You know, um, uh, even though you know deep down, I'm sure she cares about grandchildren and, and but uh, she's a tough broad. <laughs> <laughs> I read in an interview that you did that you. Uh, that your very first experience on stage was when you were two years old. 
two years old, I I do really think so. Okay. <laughs> I thought I was twelve years. Oh, you were twelve. I was twelve. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was in high in junior high school, just like what in British Hong Kong was form one. So I guess it's like eighth grade. I don't say seventh grade or something. And somebody just dropped out. It was a proud princess, and <laughs> and I happened to be the understudy. So I went on. I had this beautiful <laughs> dress, and I was the proud princess, and. And I just loved it. Yeah. <laughs> I ate it all up. So look, many years ago, I many years later, yeah. I wear hanbok. Yeah. <laughs> I I uh, I was like at the end of Endling, I'm just like a proud princess again. Yeah. So okay. life comes around yeah. full circle. So like more, like, more like a queen by now. That's a queen. Yeah. You know, it, it breaks my queen heart. Mother. <laughs> It, it breaks my heart, for instance, to hear you say that you thought you were going to quit uh, writing because, like, obviously the two of you are so great at what you do, and you know, with something like Endlings, that there's no way I think that anyone sees a play, and I can imagine even writing it or being in it, where you don't get like a, a little bit like existential at some point, and wonder, uh, you know, what do you think you would be doing if you weren't uh, artists? <laughs> you go first. <laughs> oh, I, mean, um, I studied psychology when I was in um, college, and my plan was to become a psychologist. Um, so maybe I would have done that, but I don't think I would have, because I didn't. It just was one of those things where, like, being a psychologist, like. I was I wanted to be a psychologist so that I could write a book at the end of it. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it, clearly the thing itself was not as important to me as we get to write while doing it. That makes sense. <laughs> so I think that, but I think that I there there is an alternate universe where I just like actually went through with it. You know what I would have done? Being a speechwriter. Oh, um, I always happen. thought because I mean I feel I remember like watching like uh, like you know politician speeches just being like. This is not being messaged right. Like this is not you're not being given. You know, like and I think that like I always um, I don't know. I feel like I would have like wanted to like write some kind of propaganda. I think that's what. I would have <laughs> <laughs> propaganda. Yeah. 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 Well, I don't know. But I I majored in English and then I, I was attempted to do my master and what the plan was because I grew up in in this traditional Chinese family. The, 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 if you don't become a doctor and a lawyer, I'm not that smart, then you become a teacher. And everybody expected me to do finish my master and become a teacher. But I have to tell you, I hate it. I have no patience about teaching. And I have no idea what I would have done. I guess I would I mean I but I, I was very much into raising my family, so I don't know what I would have done after the families, you know, the kids have grown up and they left the house. I don't know. I, I, have, I have no other path. I cannot do anything else. <laughs> I was when I was very young. I, I used to wait on tables to support being. At, I couldn't wait on table all this time. I guess I don't know what I would have done. So I was totally lucky that when I turned seventy, I actually booked. The Marvel gig yeah. <laughs> that kept me going. I, I don't know. So I, I'm being watched over somehow. Mm. Some, so yeah, I've been very blessed, I have mm. to say. Um, so who knows? But um, yeah, I kept going. I, I feel always feel like I'm half foot in and half out of the theater. <laughs> when I'm in, I'm in. When I'm not, okay, I go home, watch TV. <laughs> Do some cooking. <laughs> so what's one thing about that pool? That pool is just magical. Like I want to go like swim in it. But anyway, what's the one thing about the pool that surprised you the most that you weren't that you weren't expecting at all when you when you said yes to that part and also when you wrote it? I didn't expect a pool. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect. A pool. I I didn't expect. I don't know what I. I think projection was what I was expecting. Oh, I I um, I mean I. It's because Sammy like asked me like she's like well, how do you imagine the ocean and I was like maybe like with cloth <laughs> you know like we can recreate the ocean I don't know. You know? so yeah I didn't think of it. 
before. No, I didn't think yeah. so, but Sammy said, water or nothing. Okay. Yeah. She's, <laughs> she's just like, yeah, she, she really <laughs> came up for the plants. It's her pool. So it it's was... Her just, she, just, she just lives in it, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know. It was very surprising. Uh, but thank God, I always knew how to swim. You know, like ever since I was a child, and but I never dove. You know, I didn't do any diving. So it's funny that in my seventies, I'm suddenly diving head first, <laughs> which is great. You know, we learn something every day. It looks like a lot of fun, also. And, fun. Um, it, and why in G Park, uh, who plays a character that is sort of like my astral projection. Um, they were, they've been with the project, I feel like, I think the longest, even longer than it was Sammy. So I feel like it was only like, like you know, like a, a playwright who's about to quit, like a uh, rough draft, um, when she sort of first encountered it. So I feel like for us, we're like, oh, we didn't, know, we didn't think about the pool, right? Sorry, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So we, we really didn't think about the pool, we just, no. Do the play. Yeah. <laughs> so the the pool was really surprising when we when we actually saw it in ART. I said, like, really? <laughs> we have a pool. <laughs> oh, first of all, I think my first concern when they mentioned a pool is, is it going to be warm enough? <laughs> yeah, is it going to be clean? <laughs> <laughs> That's very important. Yeah. Is the real water more challenging than CGI or or? Which one would you do over and over? Which again? one? I mean, uh, real water versus yeah. versus computer. All the oh, computer stuff from the Marvel oh, shows. Oh, you know what? I I actually haven't done much um, of anything that has a lot of uh, projections and you know computer generated things. So I really don't know. I <laughs> now that I have been swimming in the pool, I really like it. I, you know, it, it's so real. You go in and you get wet. And you come outside. But the irony of it sometimes when you do that and an audience still asks you, was it really, did you really go in the pool? <laughs> so after all that, we're soaking wet and we, we were in a, some kind of a projection. So anyway, but with this, this uh, New York Theatre Workshop, because it's so much more intimate, I mean, audience do see that we are dripping wet. Yeah. You can see it, right? Yeah. You can like, smell yeah. the water. Yeah, which it, That's I, right. it is so cool. I love it so much. And there's also like a parallel story that I think is going on at Endlings, and it's this beautiful like multi generational story of women. And you know, we had you and Sammy, and we had you know the veteran actors who have been doing this for for a very long time. And if there is like one thing that you could say that you learned from each other, what 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 would it be? Well, I have to say that I have learned from Celine and Sammy about the world of the Hanyuls. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt like I, I, after being in it for so long, I really um, could get a feel of, of, of what their life is like and and the hardship and and the the ability to prevail and survive, you know. Um, and also, <laughs> what else have I learned? <laughs> um, <laughs> I learned a lot, I have to say, you know, from, from doing this play. Um, it's just, just the, the idea of, of immigration, of how one gets transported from from one place to another, and the journey that one goes through, um, it really made a huge impact on me. Because I'm an immigrant myself, but I never really thought about it that much. Um, and, and this play really makes me think about a lot of things. Um, I think. Weirdly, uh, professionalism mm. from you. I really think there is something about uh, like holding oneself to a certain kind of standard as you make work. Um, what was amazing, and I remember at our first rehearsal, uh, Sammy and I had a bit of meltdown because 
these three ladies, we had our first uh, week with just the with just the three uh, uh, women, and you all they all showed up with most of the script off book, almost all of it off book. They remembered some of the blocking and prop work from a year ago, and we got through 30 pages of the script on day one. And we and this is not something that which one should expect from actors who have a three week or four weeks um, rehearsal process. But um, I remember just you were just you just like showed up just being like, oh, we've already done the show. <laughs> you know, like we've already done the show. So we remember, you know. So uh, so I feel like um, you know I feel like it's so easy for us to feel like it's like. Um, we we're doing it for the grand a little bit. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Like I feel like there's like a there's a feeling that I think that with those of us in the sort of like a younger New York crowd to theater, I think that because we are on Instagram, we're on Facebook, I think there's a part of me that thinks that I'm doing theater for that, mm -hmm. for Instagram. Not that I literally think that, but there is a there must be a part of my muscle that just mm -hmm. thinks that like I am doing it for Instagram, and I think doing it for Instagram is great because that's how you get people to come see it, right? But the, but the thing that I think that I learned is that like actually no, it is, it no, it is actually for the thing. You're not doing it for anything else. You're doing it for the thing in front of an audience. So every night, every night that um, they uh, do their performances, I know that the thing that they're in, the, the thing that they're present in, is the work that they're doing, and not. Um, what is this going to do for me? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's what I mean by uh, professionalism or like dedication or commitment or just like absolute refusal to let yourself be um, anything less than the best you can in some ways. Um, not to say that like they're, you know, they're always just like, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? They're not, they, you know what I mean? They, you know, like, you know, they're really they're really fun and all everything, but I feel like there's a certain standard that that's just like to me from from where I'm sitting. I'm sure you're like whatever. I don't care. But like I'm there. I'm but sure. when I see it, I'm always like this kind of level of like taking your oneself seriously as an artist feels um, like something that I'm sometimes missing from like, my life, from the you know what I mean, from from our lives, you know. So that's something that I learned. That is so beautiful. And before we go, I'm just like, you know, what's your favorite kind of shellfish? Oh. <laughs> so I was craving shrimp and crab and everything else oh, when I was in the show. I love all kinds of shellfish, <laughs> but I think clams. Mm. <laughs> mm. Lobster. No, I love lobster. I love lobster, but I feel like I like, um, so there is a uh, soy sauce marinade, uh, soy, soy sauce fermented Korean uh, crab. Oh but it's good. but it's like but it's like a blue crab or like a soft shell crab. But what it is is they are fermented. They don't cook it, but they just uh, use a soy sauce to just like drench it so that it ferments uh, within itself and cooks sort of. And so it's like a raw crab, but it's uh, been fermented a little bit. Oh. It is. It's my favorite food. I think it's one of the like if you think about like bibimbap as like and like bulgogi or like halbi as the lowest level. An entry for people who are just learning to know Korean. I think this crab is like, like if you're there, if you're not a Korean and you're like eating that, then you are like you have been fully integrated. Into your <laughs> I food. want to eat that. Oh, Where wow. do I get it? Let's yeah. go. You know, <laughs> Where do we find it? <laughs> but there are some places in K Town that do have it. But my favorite places oh. are in LA. Oh, no. yeah. oh, but what is it called? It's like. Soy sauce, soy raw sauce, crab. Raw crab. It's yeah. sort of like a ceviche, but it's yeah. It's, uh, okay, it's you crab. use yeah. soy. And you eat it with like white mm -hmm. rice, or like you eat with rice, and then you just like put, so and then you eat it, and you have a like, take a bite, and then you just like, get a little bit of flesh. It's <laughs> it's my favorite thing, okay. um, but I think that like it can be very, <laughs> it's very strong. Like it's a very strong food, yeah. but we'll try. I would love it. Yeah, you would love it. I would love it. Now I'm very hungry. Um, thank you both for joining me. This has been a true pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. So thank much. you. And remember, theater is way more fun when you bring a friend or two or three or four. Anyway. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.